Well, Guy, it's great to be here in your new studio. Thanks. And to see all this work in progress. Quite amazing. Um, what I would like to do is walk around the studio, look at the work, and at the same time hear a little bit, a bit about what got you to this point. So, in other words, the last 10 years, starting with art school, just to get a bit of an idea of how you've got to this point. Yep. So, um, um, at the age of 25, I, I've been reading, you yeah. switched from boat building on the Hawkesbury. Yes. Uh, and went to the National Art School in Darlinghurst in yep. Sydney. And uh, I think um, in your honours year in 2002, you were picked up by a gallery and obviously have never looked back since. So I'm just wondering how important was that time at art school in relation to your work over the last 10 years? Well, when I, before I went to art school, I had no idea. I, I had, no, I had a, an interest in art. I had an interest in, uh, you know, developing whatever skill I had or understanding I had about art, but I really didn't have any sort of uh, fundamental skills or understand, you know, or, or even... Um, you know, awareness really of much um, art history or theory or anything. I was, you know, it was it was the perfect place for me to go, in that sense. Um, it was a, a really well-rounded sort of education, um, and and totally, of course, um, fundamentally sort of studio based, which is what I needed as well. So you know, we just thrust into that whole world and. Um, and of course, all the um, lecturers who were practicing artists at the time, um, such as such as um, Ewan McLeod, Aida Tomescu, Wendy Sharp, John Peer. Wow! You know the list goes on. So so many great um, artists teaching there and working, and so we got a good sense of. Um, well, going and seeing their work sort of really sort of reinforced or supplemented what they taught us. Um, and also, I mean, e even you got a sense of how it would be to actually be a exhibiting artist. So that's, um, that in itself was an education as well, because I, I had never even been to a gallery in Sydney. I didn't even, oh, a commercial God. gallery, didn't even know really what they God, were. that's amazing. So, you know, it was a really a, a, an important and well-rounded sort of um, exposure for me. Um, so, yeah, I did four years there. Um, and, yeah, as I, as I said, uh, you know, luckily for me, I was picked up by a gallery so that I had a real um, focus and a purpose to, to keep, you know, keep making working. work. Yeah. And, and that... That helped a lot because even though I don't think I was actually ready to exhibit, um, it kept it kept me, um, you know, kept me working. Kept you focused. Yeah. So you've answered one of my questions, which was um, in your early semi-abstract landscapes, uh, you seem to be influenced by Aida Tomescu. Yeah. And that so that was the case. Um, are there other painters who have been or currently are an influence? On your work? Well, my, you know, those early days of being exposed to all this stuff that we'd never heard of or seen of was really that, you know, they were the times when, when new discoveries had a lot of in influence. So those, those teachers at that time, I'd say, you know, above any other, um, had such a, a, a strong influence on... Um, Sort of, you know, they, you, they, you go, you, we went to art school with our own, you know, some form of our own ability or ideas or whatever, uh, and they sort of quickly broke that, you know, broke you out of habits and um, made you exposed to, you know, new ideas or new ways of working, or but they also nurtured... Uh, your natural sort of ability or way of doing things 
and so those really painterly um, painters uh, had a, had the the biggest effect or influence on me. Um, right. Yeah. Um, it seems from looking at your work and from comments you've made that winning the Archibald Prize in 2009 was a turning point for you. Um, would you explain a little bit about how winning the Archibald affected your painting? Well, uh, it was... Um, it's funny, it came at a time when I was very much exploring new ways of painting um, and new ideas. Um, and so... You know, it. I mean, it gives you. A, it was there was a lot of anxiety attached to it, and and you know all that sort of thing, and pressure and everything. But um, it was nice. It gave me a sort of confidence to just you know do follow any ideas or sort of path that I might want to explore. So in one way, I felt a sense of um, you know freedom, and it, but in another. You, you feel um, a lot more expectation. So it was sort of good and bad. But, you know, I mean, basically it, it, it kept me in the studio. So that was... That, I think that was the most important part of it. It gave yes. me a lot of... Uh, well, not so much confidence, but it just kept, you know... It kept, kept me coming back to the studio. Yes, yes, I understand. Um, I wonder how important subject matter to you, is to you um, in the light of an observation in the notes accompanying your 2012 show, Everyone Knows This Is Nowhere. Uh, it was written, the foundation of most of his work, your work, is rooted within compositional dynamics, a matter of paint first, subject second. What would you say? Well, that? look, what's become increasingly, and maybe that was the case, um, but... You know, the last few years I've pretty much exclusively worked, except for the photo, the painting you're looking at at the moment, um, exclusively worked out in the field. And so they're all plein air paintings, like this, this sort of stuff. Um, I'll talk about those birds in a minute. Uh, anyway, so uh, increasingly it's become more about... A, a place that I'm in and, and an understanding of a place that I'm in and capturing that. Uh, and that's obviously, hence the work has sort of become more focused and, um, um, what's the word? Well, more representational of specific areas. So, and, and this area is an area I've spent a lot of time sort of getting to know. And, so exactly where is this? Oh, this is down on the Turon River in, in the old gold rush town of Hill End, um, which has, um, you know, an interesting bit of history attached to it, and it's a, you can sort of read a lot about what's occurred there um, through what's left, you know, the remnants of all that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, this river has seen a lot of um, sort of the lifeblood of it but, um, back in the day. But when I first started painting there, it was uh, it was in the grip of massive drought, and then soon after, the most enormous flood came through and just ripped half the snapped acres and acres of of casuarinas in half, and just piled them down the river, and so it became a very different sort of landscape after that. So I've I've painted this same area before the floods. And, um, so I just wanted to go, revisit it after that. Uh, and Guy, these paintings are for um, an upcoming show at Jan Murphy's, your, yep. your first solo show up there. Yep, yep. When will that be? That's in February, late Feb. So, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I, basically the body of work I want to give her is, um, you know, this old gold mining town. I, I'm still exploring that. But then I went to Broken Hill which is um, where these paintings of these mine heads come from. And um, so I got really interested in the sort of history of that, um, the sort of depth of that mining operation and how that town was built around it, which is a very different sort of scope to um, the old Hill End days. 
Uh, and then the rest of the series will probably be um, some modern... Um, I'm going to go out to some of the open cut mines out at um, uh, Singleton and the Hunter. Uh, so I'll probably be exploring that, that as well. Well, you've, you, you've really touched on my next question, which is um, about your recent trips to the Central Australian Desert and the far west of New South Wales. And, um, of course, closer to home, the Southern Highlands and Hill End, where I know you spend a lot of time painting, um, amongst other things, with Ben Quilty and Luke Skiberis. So what, what is it exactly about the landscape that keeps drawing you back? Well, you know, I think there's always... Um, well, for me, what I've become more interested in is, um, you know, the way that that early the landscape was used by, you know, early settlers, how we sort of developed that relationship with the land, how we started using it, how we developed techniques of mining and all those sort of things. And in these in these places there's those elements still left and so I find them really fascinating. Like Hill End is is totally scattered with them. Um, Mine, you know, old mine shafts and machinery and equipment. You can get a, a sense of um, the reality of that sort of time. Um, you know, it's not really about sort of just uh, scenery, I guess. I think, you know, there's so much more to be explored than that. Um, so I've been drawn to these sort of harsher areas or areas that have um, shown a lot of. Um, I guess human hardships and you know they, all, all these um, these mine heads that were built the, the original miners walked to Broken Hill from Adelaide with their mining gear in a wheelbarrow you know and then they just sort of built the whole thing from there and so uh, you know there's, there's so much to sort of draw on uh, when you look at areas um, like that, that um, I think will hold my interest for quite a while. So um, your work has always been about the um, not just the environment, not just the landscape, but about our presence in it, um, what, human, yeah. what humans are doing to it. So do you think this will continue, or are there other ideas? Yeah, and look, I think that's always going to be an awareness of mine and hence the sort of you know the still life paintings that I've been making are all of roadkill and they're all basically think you know dead birds and animals that I've found on my trips out into the bush so there's you know an observation of that sort of impact I guess um, so you know that, that that that's been from the beginning even in the early abstracted works it, that was always a sort of theme and an observation. Well, Guy, it's been an absolute treat. Oh, it's and, a pleasure, um, Best of luck at Jen Murphy's. That's, um, Thank you. The yeah, pressure's on. Got a long way to go. Oh, yeah. you've come a long <laughs> way. Thanks so much, Guy. Thank you.